Hey guys and gals, it is Eric, and tonight it is time for another episode of Ask a Master Tech. And tonight we're going to be talking about something that's kind of a touchy subject for a lot of folks in the industry. It's like something we all know is going on, but nobody really wants to talk about publicly because we don't we don't want the public to know just how bad it is or how bad it can be. And that is scumbags in the industry. And there are unfortunately quite a few of these. I would say 20% at any one given time and is, is probably got something going on that needs to be addressed. And, and for a variety of reasons, it just takes forever for these things to get addressed. As we talked about in one of my previous videos, a lot of guys, most guys, are working on flat rate, which means that if you want to cut corners, there are definitely ways to do so in order to make more money in a less amount of time. That is designed or was designed to keep the best mechanics in the business, to keep motivated, well-trained mechanics in the business because they could make more than what you were initially offering them hourly. But what it has also created as a terrible side effect is the ability for mediocre mechanics or even good mechanics with bad conscience to cut corners or just flat out lie to make even more money. And it is the industry, it's the reason why mechanics have a bad rap in this nation. I mean, 100%, well, I would say 90% of the reason why mechanics are considered to be dirtbags or scumbags or thieves or crooks has to do with flat rate. The other 10% is just people that are terrible mechanics that cause uh, a lack of faith because they continuously working on something without actually knowing what they're doing. They continuously break or not properly fix something and that vehicle keeps having to come back over and over again. The owner of that company or the franchise owner or the dealer owner is having to either eat that money or continuously charge that customer because then the mechanic's not truthful and he says, well, I fixed this problem and now you've got something else, right? So you either believe your mechanic or you believe your customer. And it's not that customers won't lie because they pretty much do, even when they're not trying to. But it's that, you know, we want to trust the people we work with. And, and so you, you're caught in the middle as an owner of trying to decide what to do next. And a lot of times the customer ends up uh, taking, taking the fall for that. So that, that gives us a bad rep too. But more often than not, it is guys who are having a tough week financially and they're going to cut a corner. They're going to maybe skip something. I've seen it. I've seen it all. Unfortunately, I have seen it all. I've seen, uh, you know, a uh, guy's doing a tune up on a car and it's a V6 engine and the rear bank requires you to remove the intake manifold. So three of the spark plugs end up in their pocket and then end up in the trash. And they do a six hour job or a four and a half hour job in 15 minutes because they only do the front bank. And then that customer is left wondering why 20,000 miles down the road they've got a misfire and they need to spend all that money again to now properly remove the intake manifold and do that job. And, it's, and that's just one example and there are hundreds of them. And I mean, I have, I have unfortunately seen it all. I've seen uh, brake jobs come in where well, I hear a squeak and the, and the tech will pull off the tire, see that the brake pads are absolutely fine. They just have a piece of material caught up in it. Go up front and sell a brake job on that vehicle. And, and sometimes not even perform the brake job. I mean, just take the parts, throw them right in the trash, push the car back out the door. I have counted hundreds of times where I have seen brand new cabin filters in the trash can at dealerships instead of installed on customer cars, even though they were the ones that went up front and sold these cabin filters. I mean, there's just a lot that goes on in the industry. And it's, it's you know, my hands are dirty as well. I'm sure there have been times when I have cut a corner that I shouldn't have or done something that uh, was, you know, not right. And it, and it happens. It's this moral issue that we have as human beings every day when we go to work. We have to constantly fight with ourselves. Do I want to make extra cash or do I want to do the right thing? And for a lot of people, for a lot of different reasons, making that extra cash seems to be more important than being a good person of good character. And it, it becomes this bigger issue because you'll have a good mechanic who's a decent person and he sees this stuff going on in the shop and he will go see his boss and say, Hey, you know, I hate to say it, but John over here is, uh, you know, is screwing customers. It's not good. What are you going to do about it? And a lot of times, and this is where it gets really bad. A lot of times you might find yourself working at a shop where you go and report John for throwing away cabin filters instead of putting them in. And the business owners will actually look, and you see this a lot of dealerships, but I'm not just throwing them under the bus. You see it everywhere. The business owner will look at the numbers 
and see that that technician is turning a ton of money for them, in other words, making them a lot of money, and they don't want to get rid of them because you can get stuck with mechanics that don't make a ton of money. They're good mechanics who do good work, but they're not speed demons. And so they'll look at John over there who is just 80 hours every week, 100 hours every week, when he should only be turning maybe 60 because that's the actual amount of work that he's doing. But they see those numbers and they don't want to act. And so that is a big problem in the industry. It has been since I got in. It probably will be long after I'm gone. The only way to fix it is to drop the, you know, the, the bonus uh, structure of a flat rate or the percentages that some shops offer. But that's not going to happen. And so we just have to be mindful that you are going to run into shops where you may have a bad mechanic. And, and some, a lot of times you're going to report that mechanic and that mechanic's going to be out the door the next day. So don't think that this is like a conspiracy. But you have it on the other side where a service writer or an owner and a mechanic are okay with what's going on. In fact, I've worked at one or two companies that I didn't work for for very long where I was actually encouraged to do that kind of behavior. And so it is an issue with our industry. It is something you're going to come across. And it's something you have to deal with here. Some guys and gals will choose to compartmentalize it. They focus on the work that they have and they try not to pay attention to the stuff that's going on around them. I applaud you for that. Certainly there have been times in my life when I have done the same thing. There are other mechanics or guys and gals that are going to go and they're going to see that kind of behavior and they're either going to say, I'm out of here, which I have definitely done on multiple occasions, or they're going to call somebody out. And, uh, and if the owner or the service writer or the service manager doesn't take care of that problem, I, I continued to call it out every time I saw it. I pretty much guilted the mechanic into doing the right thing because I knew that a lot of it, morally, we slip down a slope. We don't just jump off a cliff. And so these people would just kind of slide from cutting one, you know, maybe one time I was in a hurry or I forgot to put an air filter in and I threw it out of the trash to I'm doing this with every single car. And it just becomes the new norm. But if you call them on it and you repeatedly call them on it and, and give them, you know, some grief over it, a lot of times these people can come back from that and become good, upstanding uh, people again. But it is something you're going to run into. I, they're scumbags. That's what I'm calling this video is how to deal with them, how to, how to realize that there's a reason why we as an industry have a bad name, a bad rap, and it is up to each and every one of us to make sure that it doesn't get worse and hopefully gets a little bit better. That's it for tonight, everybody. I'm Eric. I hope you enjoyed the video. Lots more automotive-related, uh, you know, just knowledge-based videos. A couple of repair videos coming up as well. But mostly just want to talk about my experiences in the industry, talk about the things that I have uh, seen, the things that I've witnessed, the things that I've done, and the things that you will probably run into if you decide to follow this as a career as well. Take care. I'll see you next time. There's always something that needs a little fixing on Farpoint Farm.